I'm slipping into the lava, yeah. Try to keep them going under. Oh yeah, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It is 2020. We're here at Youth Group tonight and I am so excited to be here with you today. My name is Aaron McGinnis. I am your student director. You can also call me A. Aaron. And today we are here in my office. I've been in here once before, but if you've seen, you know, Kelsey and I uh, did our best and we did this cool geometric painting. The whole wall is blue. It used to be gray. Um, check this out. Ready? Turn bedroom light red. Come on now, I'm gonna turn it back to blue because blue just looked cool. Turn bedroom light blue. Let's go now. Yes, it's true. I've started updating some of the things in my house to be smart devices, but hey guys, today we are going to continue our talk about emotions and specifically we're gonna be talking about anger tonight. And what does the story of Jesus tell us about our anger? You know, Jesus flipped some tables. Is anger good? Jesus told us not to be angry at each other. It's tough stuff. How do our emotions play in with what Jesus has to say about anger? So that's what's going to be happening today. You know what? Some of you went, I went around and talked to some of you before youth group last week. So we are going to start a new segment and that segment is going to be called, oh, that's fascinating. And I asked some questions about a world with no water. So I want to see what you students had to respond to say and respond to that. So here we go. Without further ado, it's our segment, oh. That's fascinating. Wow. Hey guys, I'm here with Olivia, Lucy, Elena. And whoever answers first wins. The question is this In a world with no water, what do you bring? Uh, Coffee. Coffee! <laughs> fascinating. Good stuff. Hey Zach, one question for you. In a world with no water, where does it come from? comes from our Holy Spirit. Comes from the Holy Spirit, got it, I love it. Just fascinating, fascinating answer. I'm here with Patrick Mahomes. Patrick, uh, in a world with no water, what do you have? Uh, Gatorade. That's, yeah, boo. okay, Patrick Mahomes. In a world with no water, who has it? Nobody. The Earth. The Earth, you heard it here first, the Earth. I'm here with? Leah. Oh my God. Ava. Guys, I have one question for you. Whoever answers first wins. In a world with no water, who has it? God has it. <laughs> God has it. God, one point for Jesus. All right, I'm here with... Christina. Lily. And whoever answers this first wins. The question is, in a world with no water, what do you bring? Water. <laughs> That's... <laughs> no. All right, I'm here with... Nate. Nate, in a world with literally no water, where did they put the boats? Oh, good question. Where did they put them? Yeah, that's the question. Where did they put the boats? Oh, where did they put the boats? Um, in the air? In the <laughs> Okay. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Fascinating. Fascinating. Oh, yes, you guys are hilarious. Some great answers in there. I need to get better and better at the questions. So some of you may have seen me tonight walking around and asking some questions. Uh, heads up. That's all I gotta say. Be on your toes. <laughs> awesome, guys. A couple quick announcements. If you remember, if you are looking to get into a Bible study of sorts, explore the foundations of our faith, there is going to be a student rooted. Bible study coming up. Um, ask your leader to sign up for that uh, and we can go from there. It will be awesome. Another thing that is coming up is a family trivia night and I'm going to throw it over to a different video with me and Trisha because we are going to be having a blast on that night. So here we go. Let's roll it. Hey everyone, it is Aaron here from the students. And Trisha with the kids, hey guys. And we are in an absolute blizzard Ooh. right now. Oh. Look at all this snow. Hey, speaking of snow, we want you to join us on January 22nd at 7 p.m. It's a Friday night and we are gonna be doing a game night. Yes, a game night called Snow It, it All. all. <laughs> Cause I know about winter, I know a lot, but I don't know if I snow it all, right? Oh. Now, on January 22nd, you're gonna wanna go to browncroft.org 
game night. In order to find that Zoom link, we're going to be playing a Kahoot, and it is going to be a great time for all ages. All ages. No much fun. You guys got to be there. <laughs> that was good. All right. We'll see you. See ya. Boom, guys. Yes. January 22nd. 20, yeah, that's right. I want to see you there because I know that you guys can just absolutely crush it. Um, I kind of want one of the students to win win a sledding bundle or whatever we're giving away that night. It should be a fun time. Ooh, awesome. Well, you know what it's time for? It's time for my favorite segment, or at least my cat's favorite. Oh, time out, time out, time out. Wait a second, time out. Guys, I went over to the sixth grade girls' room the other day, and they said, you know what, Aaron? You should make a theme song for Zuko, for where Zuko, and I'm like, yeah, that's not going to happen. And then I came back to my house. So for the first time ever, you're going to see the theme song for where Zuko. So without further ado, it's time for my favorite segment, or at least my cat's favorite segment. It's time for Where's Zuko? Where is Zuko going to be today? Where is Zuko going to be today? The vent or the porch or up high or down too low. All we gotta ask is, where's Zuko? Nailed it. Where is Zuko going to be today? Is he going to be A, licking a stick of butter, B, stuck in a drawer, <laughs> or is he going to be C, hanging from a tree limb? <laughs> what? Okay, these are getting ridiculous. All right, let's find out. Guys, right, so we're here in the house, loving the fireplace. Loving Zuko's little tower. Um, feeling good. We actually just put in some good old shelving right now. So we're feeling very good about that. But I'm wondering, where is Zuko? Because I could have sworn I just heard him in here. Z Zuki. What? Did, did I just hear him? Oh, no. There's no way he can even fit in these, right? That's going to be ridiculous. What is... What, what is that? <laughs> How'd you get in there, buddy? What did you do? How did he... Oh, there's a whole... Wait, but how... You are ridiculous. <laughs> oh, yes, Zuko. What a treat that little guy is. Uh, I literally heard something, went over. There he was. Uh, that was not stage or anything. That was funny. So... Wonderful. We'll be seeing more of him and we'll be hearing more of that theme song, which I'm just going to roll one more time so we get it stuck in our heads. Here we go. I'll play the theme song. Where is Zuko going to be today? Where is Zuko going to be today? The vent or the porch or up high or down too low. All we got to ask is, where's Zuko? Nailed it. Wonderful. All right. Last week, you guys, you played a game and it was called If 2020 Was A. And you had to come up with creative things, like if 2020 was a noise, what would it be? If 2020 was an animal, what would it be? And I am here to give out the points and announce the winners. I have them right here, so <laughs> here we go. I'm gonna go each one uh, each time, and if you get called, you're at least gonna get one point towards the small group cup. So here we go. If 2020 noise it was a noise, it would be a fork scratching a plate. That's the 10th grade girls. You get a point. I love it. Uh, honorable mentions was this gopher noise. <laughs> from the 9th grade girls. So good stuff. All right. The second one was if 2020 was a movie, it would be. And uh, the honorable mentions for this were the Titanic, which <laughs> makes sense. Um, it, Ratatouille, sixth grade boys, like what? That was just funny. And the winner of that one was Home Alone, seventh grade boys, Home Alone, very, very funny. <laughs> I enjoyed that one. Uh, all right, an animal. If 2020 was an animal, there were some good ones. Lots of people put the blobfish, which I really enjoyed. Lots of people put a raccoon. Or actually, one, the sixth grade girls put a raccoon because it has a mask. That was clever. Um, ninth grade girls, the roadkill was really funny, but the, uh, or 10th grade girls, uh, but murder hornets, murder, if 2020 was an animal, it would be murder hornets. I looked up if insects were animals, they technically are, so ninth grade girls, you get a point. Good stuff. Uh, 2020 was a song. There were some good ones, the, the sinking of the Titanic song, which I almost picked. 
uh, we didn't start the fire. <laughs> These are all good. All by myself, don't wanna be all by myself. That's That was really good. Sound of Silence was actually amazing too. Hello darkness, my old friend. You guys know that one. <laughs> and I Knew You Were Trouble from Taylor Swift. These are all fantastic. I think we really shined on these, but the, the winner was the group, the 12th grade boys, and they put, if 2020 was a song, it was Fergie singing the national anthem, which, here you go. <laughs> Yes, that, the 12th grade boys, well done. On to the scent. If 2020 was a scent, it would be lots of good ones like dumpster fires, porta potties, but I really enjoyed the, the scent that was chlorine. <laughs> I don't know, ninth grade girls. Chlorine is just something that would get in my eyes as a kid. I hated the smell of chlorine. It, it reminded me of dirty pools which it only smells like chlorine if someone's peed in the pool. Look up Mark Rober, he did a test. Anyways, ninth grade girls, well done. And the app, uh, there's a lot of good ones, lots of Among Us, um, lots of things, but I went with the antivirus protection program. <laughs> Avasa, I thought that was really funny. That was the seventh grade girls, uh, well done. So if you look at that, the actual winners of this would be the 10th grade girls because they won two of those. So you're gonna get the full three points and everyone else is going to receive honorable mention credit. Well done, fantastic job, you guys. Woo, all right. It started off well, started off well. Now we gotta go to a new game and we're actually gonna run a game back that we've done before and that game is called Spoiler Alert. All right, spoiler alert, you guys know it. It is time where we are going to make a movie trailer <laughs> and it's gonna be a fun time. Or just one long scene that uh, shows the movie. Wonderful, and we have to spin the wheel to see what the movie trailer is going to be. We've had Chris, Chris, and Chris, which was fantastic. We've had uh, Shoemageddon, which was a fascinating one. This time we gotta see what it's gonna be, so let's go to the wheel and spin it. It's gonna be no match. Is it gonna be 2020, a silent film? What's it gonna be, what's it gonna be, what's it gonna be? Oh, what? <laughs> Saving Private Ryan, a Muppets movie. <laughs> Guys, you gotta do Saving Private Ryan but with a Muppets flair. I don't even know what that means, but you guys gotta get creative. And you're gonna have eight minutes to do this. Well, we'll actually see, maybe six minutes. <laughs> so get ready, get in your group, Saving Private Ryan, Muppets movie. This is crazy. Get to it.
friend, you guys are done. I'm excited to see those coming in. That's going to be... You, some of you are probably like, what just happened? We had no idea what to do. And others of you have are like taking off your wigs. <laughs> and you're like taking off coats that you found in the closet. I don't know. Um, but I'm excited to see those. Oh, wonderful, guys. All right. We are going to go to a time of worship tonight. And uh, as we do before all these times, we want to pray and talk to the God who we praise. So if you'd bow your head with me. Um, Dear Lord, uh, thank you so much for bringing us to these groups today. Um, We're thankful for the community that you give us, and we're ultimately grateful that you are a good God, Lord. Um, Whether there's difficulties going on in our life or things we need to praise you for, we are just so thankful that you are with us no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, um, no matter who we're around, uh, Lord, you want to be with us, and you want us to be with you. Lord, help us draw near to you today. Help us meditate on these words of the song um, and praise you for being such an amazing wonderful God. In your name we pray. Amen. I am the Lord your God. I
Wonderful. All right, we are going to go into a our truth time. Again, we're going through a series called Vibes High Schoolers, and we're going to be talking about emotions again, anger. Um, so here we go. Truth time. Let's talk about road rage. If you have your license, maybe you've experienced it personally. You've probably been in the car with someone who has raged while driving. Or maybe you've been in a car with someone and another driver was raging at you. Maybe you've never experienced road rage, but you've encountered hallway rage. I just made that term up. Hallway rage would be when you bumped into someone between classes and they dropped their phone and then they get really mad and frustrated at you. Or maybe you remember a time when someone cut in front of you in the lunch line and you told them off. On the road or in the hallway, we all know that kind of rage. Even if you don't yell at someone or act rude with someone at school, you probably know the feeling of that kind of rage inside of you. You may not call it rage and you may not call it anger, but you get the idea. Maybe you'd say that you're frustrated. When your sister shrinks your favorite shirt in the wash, you are mad you're frustrated. When your stepdad grounds you for the weekend, you aren't angry, you're frustrated. Why? Because we don't like to think of ourselves as having an anger problem. But let's be honest, is there a difference between being mad and being frustrated? I mean, is there really a difference between road rage and road frustration? We're in this series called Vibes, and we're talking about the emotions and feelings we experience and how to name them for what they are but we're also talking about keeping those vibes from controlling us. And it all starts by figuring out what's going on inside of us, because that's where our emotions come from. And one of the emotions that definitely shows up from inside of us is anger. The thing about anger is it doesn't always look the same. Sometimes it means yelling at someone or losing your temper. That's how we normally think of it. But sometimes it means giving someone the silent treatment. You know what I'm talking about? Sometimes when someone is mad at you and they're not saying a word, it's way worse. In fact, maybe you're really good at giving people the silent treatment. Not only is it a way for you to process your anger, it's a way for you to control the situation. You hold the power because you withhold the words. Even more complicated, not all anger is bad. There is the anger we feel when we see injustices, when we see things like certain groups of people being treated unfairly, causes that we care about not being taken seriously, racism, people who don't have clean water, or people who don't take care of the planet. When we see these things happening in the world that aren't right, it's a good thing to get angry. So sometimes anger is helpful, and other times it's destructive. Either way, it's a powerful emotion. So what can we possibly do to get this vibe under control? We're going to look at a passage from the book of James in the New Testament. James was the brother of Jesus, but when Jesus was alive and walked the earth, James didn't follow him. It was only after Jesus was crucified and came back to life that James was convinced. Eventually, James became a leader in the early church. He lived in Jerusalem, and he wrote a letter primarily to Jewish Christians. It's a letter full of wisdom, and in that section we're going to look at today, James offers a principle that may sound a little too simple at first. But hang in there, because if you and I can learn to do this, it'll change everything. James starts by saying this, who is wise in an understanding among you? We hear the word wise a lot, but we may not really focus on what it means. Wise is different from smart. You can be born smart, but wisdom is earned. If you're wise, you take what you've experienced and learn from it. You understand that life is connected and that actions have consequences. And James is saying, this is important and I wanna make sure you get it because here's what's next. He continues, let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. So James is making a connection here. He's saying that wise people are humble. 
And what does humility look like? It starts with a proper view of yourself where you don't see yourself as the exception to the rules, you don't think the world revolves around you and your desires, you don't think that you deserve better treatment than everyone else, you don't see everyone else as a means to an end for what you want. James is saying that wise people don't do these things. He continues, but if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Harbor basically means to let something stick around. If you let stuff stay with you that makes you think you're better or more important, don't deny it. Call it out. Don't pretend to be fine. And then James says this, for where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. Let's say it a different way. When pride or arrogance gets lodged inside of us, it comes out in our actions. Not exactly great news, but he doesn't leave us hanging. A couple verses later, he asks, what causes fights and quarrels among you? I bet I could stop right there and everyone would have an answer to that question. Parents with unrealistic rules, younger siblings that won't stop being annoying, friends that don't text back, a stepdad that acts like he's always right, people with obnoxious TikTok accounts. We all have an answer outside of us that causes the problems among us, but James isn't buying it. He answers his own question by saying, don't they come from your desires that battle within you? In other words, your mom may drive you crazy and your little brother may be annoying, but what causes the arguments? It's not them, it's you. Or more specifically, what's in you? And this is a big deal, because as long as we think the problem is someone else, their behavior, their character, their mistake, we'll never deal with the anger problem that's inside of us. We think the problem is people not doing things our way, but James is saying the problem is that we want to get our way. But as long as we think the problem is outside of us, we'll never take care of what's inside of us. You may disagree because maybe you feel like the things you want are things that have to be earned. Things like freedom, respect, trust, and responsibility. And when you don't get the things that you feel like you've earned, it doesn't seem fair. And you're right. But James isn't talking about what's fair and what isn't. He's saying that if you want to get to the root of your frustration and anger, you need to be willing to admit that the problem is in you. The problem is when you don't get what you think you deserve. So what do we do? Well, we have to change the scripts. When other people aren't acting like we think they should, or we aren't getting what we want or think we deserve, we have to change what we say. Instead of saying, he's being selfish, she's being annoying, or they're being rude, instead, we say, you know what the problem is? I'm not getting what I want. I understand that this sounds terrible, but I'm telling you, when you start doing this, your relationships will change. Your frustration level changes. Your anger changes. Why? Because you're no longer looking to other people as a reason for why you feel the way you feel. As long as you're looking to other people as the reason for feeling the way you do, other people have control of your emotions. On the other hand, when you start admitting that the problem is that you're not getting what you want, you get control back. And isn't that what we all want when it comes to our emotions? We want control. James is making the point that as long as you think the problem is outside of yourself and that it's somebody else's fault, you'll feel like you get a free pass to act however you want because you can say that you didn't do anything wrong. You can avoid ownership and responsibility. You can look at others and say, they made me do it. They made me act that way. They made me say it. They left me no choice. But James is saying, nope. If you did that thing or said that thing that was angry, mean, or hurtful, it was because it was in you to say it or do it. Of course, there are circumstances that should upset you, like being treated unfairly. But imagine if in the middle of feeling your anger and frustration, you were able to say, Part of the problem, not the whole problem, but part of it, is that I'm not getting what I want. Just being willing to say that out loud helps you keep yourself from being controlled by anger and frustration. Owning your part of the problem keeps your anger and frustration from driving you and owning you. And no matter who you are, that's a good thing. Based on what we've talked about today, here's my question for you. What's your relationship with anger? Do you control it or does it control you? If I were to ask your coach, your mom or dad, step parents, brother and sister, teammates, classmates, friends, what would they say? 
Because if your anger is controlling you in any of these relationships, then it's controlling you too much. And the only way to beat it, according to James, is with humility. And humility says, it's not all my fault, but I'm going to own my part of it. And my part of it has to do with me not getting my way when I want to. So when you feel anger, frustration, or whatever you want to call it rising up, when you're in that disagreement with a parent, step-parent, coach, friend, or sibling, ask yourself, what am I not getting that is causing this anger? Because even if you aren't the whole problem, humility means recognizing that you're part of the problem. And when you learn how to recognize that, the emotion of anger begins to lessen its control over you. The good news is that for those of us who are Jesus followers, we follow someone who has led the way in this. Jesus said no to getting his way. In fact, the Apostle Paul wrote about this very thing when he talked about Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. Jesus had every reason and every right to get his own way, but he didn't. He gave up what he wanted so that we could know how valuable we are in God's sight. Paul starts this passage about Jesus and his humility by saying this, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love. Did you catch that? He tells us to be like Christ. And then he tells us what Christ is like. Humble, when he had every reason not to be. Jesus surrendered his way when he could have easily fought for it. Following the example of Jesus is how we keep anger from controlling us. Think of it this way. Because of Jesus, anger doesn't have to be the boss of you. I really believe following Jesus will make your life better. I really do. Because when you follow him, he will nudge you away from self-centeredness, arrogance, and pride, and move you more towards humility and love for others. And as that happens, you will find that anger no longer has the hold on you that it did before. And less powerful anger is a win for everyone. This week, I want you to begin imagining what life would look like if anger didn't control you. None of us will get this right completely or all the time, but I want to encourage you to talk to someone this week. Maybe it's your pastor or maybe it's your small group, but talk about some ways that you can take some steps in the right direction. In your personal circumstances, what would it look like for you to choose wisdom and humility over anger? When you're no longer controlled by anger and you choose to show humility and love, it can change everything. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that message. We're going to transition into our I Have Thoughts Bible analysis, where we want to hear your thoughts. We want to hear how you study the Bible and what you um, see that God is uh is showing us. So we're going to move into I Have Thoughts. I'll put the verse on the screen as well as maybe a little bit of context. So here we go. 